trouble. Oh, no, <laughs> I just, I just forgot. Forgot what? Well, no one's here. No psycho Tabata, Kelvin's off to find him, the role-playing group's on hold. It's, he's lonely. I hadn't noticed. You know, maybe if you were not sad and tried to talk to someone once in a while, you might. Hi, Bacchus. What do you want? I want to watch something. With me? No, I want you to leave. That sounds preferable, actually. Dave, so don't be like everyone else in my life. You know, I was about to review Robocop if you're interested. What? What's this? Do you like action films? Yeah. Violent and gory ones? Uh huh. Well, then strap in for one of the bloodiest films of the 80s. Hell yeah! That's also prophetic and loaded with social commentary. So, why you got to do that all the time? It's my thing. Meet Detroit, a city with a problem. Crime has gone through the roof, the city filed bankruptcy, and officials are doing nothing to fix it. Man, that's depressing. Thank God this is just a movie. Yeah, right. The city is in such a state that they actually hire a corporation to run their police force. One that invests in things like prisons, hospitals, and other areas not normally seen and as profitable. Huh. Yeah, it's fairly common practice now, I know, but back then, pretty hard to imagine corporations buying into social functions uh, sure, like yeah, that. Sure, yeah, but you said this was an action movie, right? Give Detroit time. Three dead police officers, one critically injured. Officer Frank Fredrickson escaped and identified this man. Clarence Bodiker, unofficial crime boss of Old Detroit, now sought in connection with the deaths of 31 police officers. Today he's at large, while doctors at Henry Ford Memorial Hospital fight to save the life of Officer Frank Fredrickson. Good luck, Frank. Wow, that's a lot of smiling for so many cops killed. Honestly, not as weird today as it would have been back then. Newscasters have had a hard balance to maintain for decades, with ratings dictating who gets to keep their job. Over the long term, this creates a consistent tone and friendly faces regardless of what the news actually is. The days of Hindenburg reporting are gone. They're as dated as that audio clip. Because real tragedies meeting real emotions is just too hard for some to watch. I like Wahlburgers. Oh, the humanity. Why would Smiles McGee make a bunch of cops die and easier to swallow? The social illusion of normalcy. It's often a reflex to urban decay. What's considered a catastrophe in the Midwest, where population and crime rates are relatively low, plays as more commonplace in areas of higher density and crime. Extrapolated further, this turns even the most despondent living conditions into something palatable for the inhabitants, even when the truth is evident to them, because they're used to it. So what's the point in faking happy when no one is? Because that's what America does best. You awful cynical sometimes. What's weird is that this is literally how the film opens, specifically with images of tragedy like the Challenger space shuttle exploding, flipping over to the smiling faces of the anchors. It's blatant. Right, right, it's how it is today, I understand, I gets it. Now you said there'd be action. Where is it? Oh, just around the corner, watch. Here's Murphy, the newest cop transferred into South Detroit. He's a good guy who does the right things and wants justice brought to the scum who ruin people's lives. Well, that sounds like a good guy to turn the situation around. Yeah, sure. Let's see how Detroit welcomes him. Jeez! Oh! Not the warmest greeting. There was a lot of blood! That's just how Clarence rolls. Oh, I should bring in the DM to talk about but, one hold of the on. baddest movie villains of all time. Do you not remember? Remember what? DM's been gone for like a year. Huh. And you keep trying to talk to him, but you get the other guy. Kind of, I kind of get it. He's, he's like the DM, right? Oh, no, no, no. He ain't nothing like the DM. Kelvin done told me about this one. He, he does tell stories, but they're his stories. He likes to play games, but they're on his terms for his entertainment. We ain't nothing in his eyes but pawns in a scheme. He just sits back. Setting them traps for us to trip, watching us wriggle under his thumb, waiting and smiling for us to fall and become more dust in his traps. He a bad, bad man. Now, friends, look at what I mean. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, pucks. There he is! Who? Ha! Pucks him up in the air. 
the difference between a gentleman and a bum with a capital B and that rhymes with B and that stands for pool! Talking about Robocop, are we? <laughs> yes. Let's discover Clarence Bodyguard together. It'll be a magical experience for everyone. The self-made man of Detroit's seaside. This gang leader goes for broke. He's got the money, he's got the drugs, got the men to make it all flow. <laughs> if only Detroit's finest would just stop getting in his way. He's evil without redemption and asks for none. The corporate hitman with no remorse. And he does it all with a smile. <sighs> I could almost sing a song about it. I never thought about it that way, but he is everything that the plot needs. In films focused on dystopia, the environment has to be the threat, where set pieces and atmosphere are the enemy. That can be effective, but also go over the heads of some, particularly those that only go to see action films for the violence. Clarence personifies the worst humanity has to offer, especially when he's in cahoots with the corrupt corporate influences. And he is the sum total of all the bad decisions that's led to current day Detroit. He had nothing to do with the debt or the pension spending. He's a result of the situation. You actually want to go into why Detroit failed? Because I've got the statistics, but this show isn't nearly long enough to tell them all. Well, with a current day solve rate of 8.7%, you can see how Bodiger was a man ahead of his time. He boasts about his connection to a big corporation. <laughs> you know, the one that's buying up all the city. <laughs> Heck, they even pay him for getting arrested too. <laughs> It's just so perfect, the way he takes full advantage of the situation that a formerly booming city has offered him. So he's not born evil, he's just a byproduct of the conditions that were present. With unemployment comes thugs. With thugs comes gangs. With gangs come empires. With empires comes new world orders. As long as, you know, there's no cops to stop him, Potter can, can do whatever the hell he wants. That's truly terrible. Thanks for outlining it, Storyteller. Anytime. <laughs> oh, and Bacchus. Yeah? I look forward to seeing you at the role play this week. He fans me! Oh. Oh, that hurt. Fortunate for Murphy, that corporation that owns the police force also owns his dead body, and decided to make him the best metal-clad law enforcer the world has ever seen. Robocop. Man, he does look cool, but does he act cool? Bacchus, watch and learn. Oh yeah, now that's what I'm talking about. He's like more than a man. He's like a Mega Man times 12. Maybe he's just in Mega Man 12. Well, kind of. See, he has no memory of the man he used to be. What? But why would they do that to him? He was a badass. While the corporation may have needed that juicy human brain to complete their task, they didn't necessarily want the pesky personality that came with it. Is that a metaphor? You bet your hat it is. So... He's a mindless drone for the man. Not entirely. See, he gets glimpses of his old self in dreams, finding small facts and putting a bigger picture together. Despite how they tore his body down and wiped his mind, the man that was Murphy refused to die. Now that is a metaphor, right? Right. Oh, it is! Soch! We got to help the DM! Where'd you come up with that? D Murphy was in an impossible situation against the forces that he couldn't control. Did that stop him from doing the right thing? No, but if there's something that I've learned from this movie, which you haven't finished yet, it's that people like Clarence are always going to try and get their way. Hell, bigger people than Clarence, like big forces pushing down on us, trying to make us pawns in their little game of chess, and then we're just discarding us when they're done. Did Robocop stand for that? N no. He fought it. Against all odds, Murphy made every step he could in life and as Robocop to make the world a better place for people without influence or power to live, trying to make society one where anyone had a chance to succeed. He's the hero we want out there fighting for us, the one who says there are no pawns, only people who knock others over. So that's what we do! We gonna go find the DM and put a stop to the storyteller so we don't make us part of his sick game no more. Are you in? No high fives. Oh. Let's go find the DM. Yay! I hope he's not in Detroit. Ooh, no. No, not Sidetra. No, sir. You wanna see sin of the wickedest kind? Here it is. You wanna see virtue left behind? Here it is. 
sodom with spice and vice versa. You want to see where the vice is worse? Here it is. I mean, here it is. No police intervention and that gang's going to become an empire. When that empire becomes a new world order. Just too sweet. Woo! You went there. <laughs> yep, I went That's there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that was going to go with a Saints Row reference, but no, you just spiked the ball, didn't you? <laughs> yep. <laughs>